this is one of the lessons where we think, oh my God, there is so many skills to learn. However, there are. Think about all the time and effort you've put in to researching the pros and cons of every type of medical interventions and then creating a birth plan. It's like planning a wedding. You can have so many things that you want and you don't want. And yet, because there's no societal message at all that birth is an activity you have to do and you need skills for it, that means this whole area of birth skills has been neglected. That's why we developed these skills in the 1970s. Lamaze and Bradley were the first universal skills and that means they weren't very sophisticated and they didn't work for everybody. They were actually targeting low-risk normal pregnancies and birth, and that left out a huge chunk of women. And so we wanted to develop skills that worked in every single type of birth, and those skills had to be universal in nature. We all blink, we all cough, and we can all tighten up our rectum. So in this lesson, there are basically three different skill areas. Breathing, communication, verbal and nonverbal to ourselves and to others, and touch. It's really important that you understand that these are three discrete skill sets that all of these interface. So let's talk about the breathing at first. Lama's breathing was this. We couldn't sustain it. We'd end up breathing in paper bags and feeling sick and wanted to pass out. You couldn't sustain it. Bradley was in the nose, out the mouth. Well, that's assuming that in the nose and out the mouth always sounds like that. However, in the nose and in the mouth can sound like this when we're running. <sighs> or like this when we're having sex. <sighs> or like this when we're stressed. <sighs> or like this when we're freaked. <sighs> and so if you say to people, breathe in your nose and out your mouth, and a guy hears any of those variations, he thinks, well, she's breathing in her nose and out her mouth. She's doing it right. However, breathing in the nose and out the mouth can do this as well. Or this. Both of those are in the nose, out the mouth, and both of those are variations of this in the nose, out the mouth breathing. You need to know the four types of breathing. We had to create breathing that made more sense than or in the nose, out the mouth, all sorts of variations. When you go through the sustainable, adaptable, and usable breathing resource, you will learn the four variations that humans breathe. We breathe in only four ways. All of us do. And if it doesn't pop to your head, then trust me, you don't know. But as soon as you know, you know, you know. But why didn't you know? And this has always been the issue with birth skills. We don't know because we don't know and we're not looking for it. And so we don't know what we don't know. Learn the four variations of how humans breathe. Then go through the variations within each of those four patterns so you find the most relaxing types of way to breathe. That's what's going to be sustainable. And those types have to be adjustable. So when you read the five phases of contraction handout, you will learn that the beginning of the contraction, your breathing may be one of those breathing patterns in a very calm way. And then that changes as the pain gets gets more intense. And as it peaks and as it goes down, it goes away. You want to know how to adjust your breathing. It's not a technique. It's a skill. There are a lot of men who use this skill. One father said, I used it when I got tattooed. Well, that's good. The other one is the directed breathing. And that's really important. When we breathe in, we can feel our lungs expand. What we discovered was we can actually direct our breathing. So you can breathe in, and expand inside the pelvis. It may take a bit of work to learn how to do that. And notice you'll feel the sacrum move back more than you'll feel the pubic bones, and you'll feel the hips a little bit more, because that's where you create more space. And that's why the body work is so important, because you want to create space in your bony structure to help this big object come through that bony structure. And that's why you want to learn about softening versus tension in one of the other lessons. So as you direct your breathing and can expand on each inhalation, you can soften and go around the pelvic clock, which is another one of the body skills, and soften on the inside of your pelvis, which is what helps your cervix to dilate. 
So you can direct your breathing into any part of your body. So then we went on to communication. It wasn't this order that we learned these things. It's the order that we've tried to put them in. So communication is very complex. There's verbal and there's nonverbal. And it's what we say to ourselves and the behaviors we use towards ourselves and to other people. The communication resources in this lesson have to do with the teamwork, which is in another lesson. There is no linear order to these skills. So you have to just pick topics that interest you. Now remember, and we'll say this over and over again, if you are listening to this as a pregnant woman, pick what you want. If you're listening to this as the partner, pick what you want. You can learn different streams of these skills. That's not a problem. Then share and teach each other. It'll cut your learning time down. But it also helps you perceive of your equally important roles in this. So the communication skills are going to teach you how to have non, good nonverbal communication to each other and how to have good communication in your own self as well. And that's really important, which then takes us on to the touch. These skills develop because often you hear a woman sit there and say, you know, he tried to touch me and I just flicked his hand off or I'd say, don't touch me now. Well, okay. And then the partner would never really want to approach the woman again. And this had lasting effects after birth. So we had to develop the right touch. And we had to develop the right touch so that it had a purpose. And that purpose is to cue the woman to soften inside her body. This is a very important resource to go through. You can use it with your children when they're sick or with each other if you've had a bad day at the office. Just remember that these skills all tie together because touch is a form of communication. And you use your breathing along with your touch. The other handout in this lesson is the positive negative voice. This was actually one of the early skills that we developed, but it was not put into the original resource that was launched as the pink kit, which was a, a VHS, a book, and a cassette, which had the internal work in it and the color-coded book that's included here and all the video segments that are connected to the book. The fact was that we learned very early on that women can have very negative thoughts during birth. We are told, particularly starting in the 70s and in the 80s, that birth is a highlight experience and that some women have birth orgasms. Well, good on you for you who have done that. Most of us do not like birth. In fact, many of us think we're going to die, and a lot of us hate the experience. And so if we hate the experience, or we're overwhelmed by experience, or if we can't wait till it gets over, or if we're so overwhelmed after the birth of our baby that we resent the baby, that's not a good look. So what we learn by discussing this and talking about it and experiencing it is that the negative voice is reality. It is reality. However, if we have a negative voice, that should not take away our empowerment. And the way we reclaimed our empowerment was to activate our skills through the other part of our brain, which is the cortex. The reactivity is going to be in the primal brain. I don't like it. I hate it. I'm dying. Don't ever get near me. Don't touch me. <laughs> That's a primal brain. Got to get out of this. Want to stop for lunch. You two do it. The other part of the brain is I need to breathe in and expand and breathe out and soften. We can do this. I did it. <laughs> you can do it. We learned that voice that natters at us. It does throughout our life. We can have children that we know we love, but that child is behaving horribly that day and we have really negative voices. We want to smack the kid. We want to scream at the kid. We hate the kid. Get out of our life. I'm controlled by this little boy or this little girl. And we know that if we have good parenting skills, we will not act on that negative voice. We can have negative thoughts. We just need to have skills so that we behave in a skilled way and in a consciously skilled way that helps us cope, manage, deal with, work through, handle, stay on top, feeling control. And if you have any other phrase, please let us know.